on the mountain top. Yes, we are ascending to a higher place in consciousness where Jesus taught his disciples this sermon on the mountain. Let me tell you, Jesus is talking. Jesus is spitting out some stuff. He is giving them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what it means to be his disciple. This is his manifesto on matters that matter most. That's why we're covering so many subjects. So many topics are being covered because this is Jesus' manifesto. He's given his mind, his thoughts on all of these different subject matters. And so today we're talking about priorities. We're on day number 40. Yes, we're on day number 40. You say, wait a minute. How, I thought it was only a 40-day fast. Well, we uh, it's 49 days. We start on a Sunday. We end on a Sunday. And if you desire to have Sundays off or a day off from the fasting aspect to make a 40-day fast, you're certainly willing to do that. I just keep going and I take a day off on Sunday. Sunday is my day off when I eat whatever I desire, drink whatever I desire, because that's my day off. So it's really like a 40-day fast, even though the consecration and the teaching period is for 49 days. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart if you got that. All right. So today we're on day number 40 and we're talking about priorities. That's right. I said it. Priorities. What are your priorities? And we're on page number 83. And the scripture is a very small verse. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 21. It says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will be your heart also, Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 21. And again, we're talking about priorities. And I don't have a fancy subject for you today. We're just going to talk about priorities. When's the last time you really sat down and thought about your priorities? When is the last time that you really looked at the order of your life, the structure of your life? When is the last time you put your priorities, your affairs in order? There is a divine order in the universe. And everything in our lives, world, and affairs are flowing and functioning in that divine order. And when you operate in divine order, you begin to set your life in order based upon your priorities. Which means what is important to you? What do you value? What matters most in your life? What are your priorities? And how do you form your priorities? How do you determine? Does everything get equal billing? Does everything get equal standing in your life? How do you determine what your priorities are? How do you determine what matters most um, in your life? And it's not the same for everybody. Everybody's priorities are different. Depending on where you are in your consciousness determines what your priorities are. And so um, in, my, in my life, the way my priorities are set up is that I love God, <laughs> then I love myself, and then I love everybody else in that order. Yes, it's God first, then me, then everybody else. That's how my priorities are aligned. And once I establish God, me, and then, well, if you break that everyone else down, it's then my family and my friends, and then it kind of goes into the earth with that everybody else. And that might be where you need to set some priorities with who is included in that everybody else and who is first and second and all that kind of stuff. Who's on first, who's on second, who's on third in terms of the everybody else piece of my pie, piece of my puzzle. All right. And so what determines, you said where your treasure is. And normally when we think of treasure, we just think about money. And so even as a spiritual leader of today's church and a presiding prelate of uh, the Church of the Everlasting Kingdom, often we talk about people's treasure, you know, time, talent, and treasure. We're just talking about money. And in order for us to be able to budget, um, every year we gave a, um, a, a commitment form about people's giving of their of their treasure, of their tithe and their offering. So the church could budget and be good stewards of our of our resources. We gave a commitment form to our ministers, to our leadership staff, to our members, to our board, so that we can budget and be good stewards of the resources that God gives us. Amen. Does your church have a budget? Does your church have an income statement? <laughs> Do you get a report on what's going on with the money? <laughs> 
you know, so so that we can be in financial order. Because sometimes we wonder why we're not prospering, but it's because we're not being good stewards of God's resources. We're not being accountable about what it is that we're doing with the funds. I believe that every member who tithes and gives offering deserves to know what's going on with the money. Now, y'all might shut me off this morning, but Jesus talked about treasure, talked about money, so I'm talking about money. That transparency, there's nothing to hide. <laughs> there's nothing to hide. When everything is done right and everything is done above board, there's there's nothing to hide. I'm not hiding from the government. You know, I'm not hiding from anybody else. You know, when the business is up front and up right, you do an annual report. It's a it's a 501c3 organization. It's a nonprofit. The books are open. People have a right to full disclosure of what's going on. Amen, somebody. And so because my heart is in this. So my money is in this. And I like to know I don't desire my heart to be broken. <laughs> and I don't desire my money to be messed with. Amen, somebody. All right. So Jesus said, your treasure. What do you treasure? What do you value? And so we used to look at it as just our treasure, meaning our money. But as we continue to grow in Christ consciousness as a local assembly, as a spiritual community, we're not just asking people about how they're tithing their treasure we're also asking them about how you're tithing your time and how are you tithing your talent? Because everybody thinks the church is just about money. They just want to get your money. That's all they want to do is get your money. But we're looking at your priorities in a holistic sense. You know, what are your priorities with your treasure? What are your priorities with your time? What are your priorities with your talent? Those are the resources that God has given you. And you know what's important to you. You know what you value by how you distribute, how you handle, how you structure your time, your talent, and your treasure. Amen. All right. So that's what we determine our priority. Priorities of what? Priorities of my time, priorities of my talent, and priorities of my treasure. I, I, and I tithe to God all of it. I tithe my time. I do two hours and 40 minutes a day uh, based upon spiritual practices and services. You know, I tithe my time. I tithe my talent. You know, I don't charge for everything I do. You know, I don't charge for every engagement, every counseling session that I have. You know, there are people that I do pro bono. That's a part of my tithing of my talent. Yes, and I tithe my time, I tithe my talent, and I tithe my treasure. As you know, that's how I live my life because those are my priorities. And so my priorities, how you handle your treasure, what you value, your time, your talent, and your money determines where your heart is. And that's what we're talking about, Jesus, the heart of the matter. You can say all day, you know, that, you know, my heart, God, I give you my heart. But where your heart really is, is evidenced by how you distribute, how you spend your time, your talent, and your treasure. And I tithe and I offer my time, my talent, and my treasure. So I'm not just accountable about tithing my treasure, but I'm also accountable about tithing my time. I'm also accountable about tithing my talent because they all belong to God. God is my source and everything and everyone else is a resource. So I recognize that you are the source from which all blessings flow. So therefore, I tithe my time, I tithe my talent, and I tithe my treasure. All right, let's get into our pulley points today. Pulley point number one. To put this in order where it's not rules and regulation and rituals and religion, pulley point number one, you got to start with, I only have one God. Pulley point number one is I only have one God. This is where you start lining what your priorities are and who's on first, who's on second, who's on third. What do I do first with my time? What do I do first with my talent? What do I do first with my treasure? I only have one God. So God sets the standard of what's important to me because I start with God. I only have one God. We are a monotheistic religion. We are a monotheistic faith. So I'm not trying to please different gods. We're the moon God and the sun God and the water God and the fertility God. I, my only goal is to please God. I only have one God. My goal is that God will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. I can't please everybody. 
I can only please one God. So pulling point number one is I only have one God. I only worship one God. I only serve one God. And God, who is love, determines the standard, determines how I do things, how I handle things. It's not based upon my emotions. It's not based upon what somebody else says or does or doesn't say or doesn't do. It's based upon God. Pulling point number one, I only have one God. How many gods do you have? How many idols are you worshiping? How many people and places and things have you put on the same level with God? Have you given equal billing to God in terms of your... Because you can say you only have one God. But whether or not you have one God is determined by your time, by your talent, and by your treasure. So pulling point number one is I only have one God. Come on, affirm with me today. I only have one God. And that makes it easy. It makes it simple because my goal is to please God. I only have one God. And so the standards of what I do with my time, with my talent, and what my treasure are set by God because I only have one God. The government is not my God. The, my job is not my God. My family, my friends, they are not my God. My partner, my spouse, my husband, my wife are not my parents. They are not my God. I only have one God. Pulley point number two. My God is first in my life. I only have one God. So I don't have to, you know, break it up and share. And my God, Jehovah, the I am that I am, the everywhere evenly present spirit of absolute good is first in my life. God is not just a part of my life. God is first in my life. God is my priority. I only have one God and my priority is to please God. My priority is that God is first in my life. Who's first in your life? You know what you treasure, what you value by what's first. And what's the first thing you do when you get up in the morning? Is it talking to God? Is it prayer? You know who your God is by what's first in your life. What's the first thing you do when you get paid? What's the first thing you do with your talents? Who's first in your life? And we may think of God being first, but your time, your talent, and your treasure tell who's first in your life. So pulley point number one, I only have one God. Pulley point number two, my God is first in my life. So the first fruit of my time, the first thing I do in the morning is I reverence and worship God. Before I pick up my cell phone, before I check my messages, before I check my account, the first thing I do is talk to God. When I get money, when I get resources, income, when I get paid, the first thing I do is I give my tithe and my offering. Because God is first in my life. My talents, when I'm looking at my schedule and how I'm using, the first thing is God. God is my priority. God is first in my life. Who's first in your life? Who gets the first part of your time? Who gets the first part of your talent? Who gets the first part of your treasure? Pulley point number one, I only have one God. Pulley point number two, my God is first. You know, it's not like, well, you know, after I pay all my bills, then, you know, I do my tithes and my offering. Or after I get my coffee and get moving and all that, then I'm going to pray. No, God is first in my life. After I distribute my talents to my job and everybody else, then I see where I can squeeze in God. No, God is first in my life. First with my talent, first with my time, and first with my treasure. Whatever is first in your life, whether it's your credit cards, whether it's your boo, your babe, whether it's your family and your friend, whatever is first in your life, that really is your God. Uh-oh. Pulley point number three. My God is the center of my life. Everybody else has to revolve around. <coughs> Everybody else has to revolve around God, who is the center of my life. God, my God is the center of my life. 
which means God is the center, God is first, I only have one, and everything and everybody else revolves around God. God is the center of my life. Everything and everyone else revolves around God. God does not revolve around them. They, God does not revolve around them. God is the center and they get in line. They are prioritized with God as the center. That's what the kingdom is. That's the kingdom of God is a way of, of being, a way of seeing, a way of thinking, a way of speaking, and a way of behaving in which God is the center. God is the center of my being. God is the center of my seeing, how I look at stuff. God is the center of my thoughts, how I think about things. God is the center of my words, how I speak. God is the center of my actions and what I do. God is the center of my life. No one else can be my center. I cannot revolve my world around anything or anybody but God. And after God, then it's me. Then it's everybody else. Because the Bible says to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm called to love God, to love myself, and to love everyone else in that order. It is just that simple. Because that's how I establish my priorities. That's how I determine when two things come up what I'm going to do. That when there's schedule conflicts, this is how I determine what I'm going to do. When somebody want to talk to me all night long and then I can't wake up in the morning, that's how I determine what I'm going to do. Because pulling point number one, I only have one God. I'm not worshiping anybody else. <laughs> I love you, but I'm only worshiping God. I appreciate you, but I'm only worshiping God. I bless you. I celebrate you, but I'm only worshiping one God, Jehovah. Pulley point number two, my God, and people can have whatever God they have, however many gods they have, but my God is first in my life. And pulley point number three, my God is the center of my life. And everyone and everything else has to revolve around that center. If I were making circles, it'd be God in the center. Then me would be that next circle. And then we go from there. Your spouse, your partner, your family, your friends. Come on. And then you keep spreading that circle out. But it starts with the center, which is God, which causes me to set the order, set the structure, the priorities of my time, the priorities of my talent, the priorities of my treasure. And so I'm asking you today, what are your priorities? Don't just automatically say God. Look at your time and let it tell you. Look at your talents and how you use them and let it tell you. Look at your treasure. Look at your bank account. Look at your bank statements. Look at your debits and credits and let it tell you what is your priority. I love you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of the daily download. 